part three. We're having technical difficulties today. What do I do with this whole number nine? What do you think? Right, so the first thing that we're going to do is convert it to a mixed number. So we have nine. How many decimal places do I have? Okay. What goes in my denominator? A thousand. A one and one, two, three zeros. What goes in my numerator? Six seventy-five. Okay. Is there anything that I can divide six hundred seventy-five and a thousand by? I couldn't divide by five. There's something greater. Twenty-five. And I'm going to use a handy dandy calculator. 675 divided by 25. <coughs> That's 27. And 40. Can I simplify this any further? No, 27 is a prime number. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. It's incorrect. Right. What is 27 divisible by? Nine and three. Do nine or three go into 40? Good job. Good job. The reason I say that is because a lot of people think 27 is prime, right? Yes. It's because it's an odd number that ends in seven. And we forget that nine and three both go into that. Okay? All right. Questions here? We're good to go? Okay, there is one more thing that we need to learn how to do today. Okay? And this is one that sometimes we can make mistakes with. And then I'm all done talking, I promise. Let's say that we need to convert a repeating decimal to a fraction. Because I'm telling you that a repeating decimal is a rational number. Can I follow that same rule that I used before? Yeah? But my decimal place goes to infinity, so do I need to draw infinity zeros? Can I do that? If I didn't do that, then I would be rounding. And we don't want a rounded fraction. We need an exact fraction. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to have our repeating decimal represent a variable. We need use variable n. Okay? Then we are going to multiply each side by 10. I have one decimal that repeats, so I need one zero after my one. So I'm going to multiply by 10. That means that I have 10 times 0 0.66666. We're going to go out three decimal places. Okay? 10 times that is 6.666. That equals 10. N. Everybody with me? Okay. We're going to subtract N from both sides. On this side, I'm not going to subtract N as a variable though. What am I going to subtract N as? I'm going to subtract from N as my decimal. Can I do that? Am I subtracting from the same thing on both sides of my equal sign? Yes. Yes, because n is equal to my decimal value. So because n is equal to my decimal value, I can do that. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. So 6.66666 minus 0.66666 leaves me with what? 
No. Six. Six. Because if I take my decimal value and I subtract the decimal, I'm left with the whole number, right? Oh. Okay. That's equal to what's 10 and minus 1n? 9n, correct? Okay. We're going to divide both sides by 9 to get n by itself. That would say that 6 ninths equaled n. n is still my decimal value, correct? Yes? Can I simplify 6 ninths? It becomes what? So what is point? What is point 0.6 repeating as a fraction? Two-thirds. Have we seen this before? Yeah. You've seen how to do this before? No, no but it's on that page. No, but it's on the page in the book? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what questions do we have about this? Do we have any questions about this? Are we still kind of going, oh, uh, what did you just do? Yeah. yeah, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to just turn off the video for today, and we're going to do another example. Thank you.